So I'm going to go over uh, some of these uh, slides. Uh, most of those, we, we already have uh, demonstrations here, so I'm not going to uh, repeat them. Uh, here's a little bit of uh, calculations of uh, the fall protection. You know, you, you have a person working uh, and, and the connection, connection point is four and a half feet over. When that person falls, that pack to absorb the, the shock absorber will extend. So in this case, you know, you need at least 14.5 uh, feet clearance, depending on what, uh, how high the anchor point is, that may, may change. But that gives you an idea and, and explains the concept that also you need to be aware that, that you need this clearance for that person to fall and be safe. So don't stack materials, raw materials down here that can you know, cost uh, that person an injury when uh, falling. Uh, scaffold construction, you know, some uh, problems with scaffold. I'm just going to see if I can run some of these videos. Uh, maybe uh, interesting. I don't remember this one exactly what it is about, but uh, let me see. There's some really good videos uh, here, so. Uh, let me see. Oops. Oh, what happened? Okay. In the U.S., more than than 800 construction workers die every year while on the job. Falls are the number one cause of fatalities in construction. Falls cause one of every three construction worker deaths. These falls happen in a split second while workers are on roofs, scaffolds, ladders, bridges, and other work surfaces. But these deaths can be prevented. The video you're about to see shows how quickly falls at construction sites can lead to workers' deaths. The video will also show what employers must do so that the work can be done more safely. Employers have a responsibility to provide a safe workplace and required protective equipment. You'll see that using the right type of fall protection saves lives. Please be advised, the scenes you're about to see deal with deaths at construction sites and might be disturbing for some people. All scenes are based on true stories. A worker was installing vinyl siding on a two-story townhome. He was standing on a ladder that was placed on top of a scaffold. A co-worker was on the scaffold cutting pieces of siding. The scaffold had no guardrail. The workers were not wearing any fall protection. While standing on the top step of the ladder, the worker putting up siding overreached to one side and the ladder overturned. He fell nearly 20 feet and landed on the driveway below. He died later that day from injuries caused by the fall. Let's look at the events leading up to this tragic incident and see how it could have been prevented. Originally, the worker installing siding was standing on a ladder that was placed on top of a scaffold. This is a very serious and dangerous OSHA violation. Also, there was no fall protection for these workers. OSHA requires employers to provide workers with fall protection when they're working on scaffolds more than 10 feet above a lower level. Let's look again at the worker installing siding. But now, the worker is standing on a fully decked pump jack scaffold. It has guardrails at the top, middle, and ends. So instead of being at risk from falling while installing siding, this worker is now protected from fall hazards. This example shows the importance of employers following OSHA's fall protection standards to ensure that workers are provided with a safe workplace. These types of construction deaths are preventable. The fall protection measures shown here save workers' lives. Use fall protection on the job. It could be the difference between life and death. If you would like more information, contact OSHA at www.osha.gov or 1-800-321-OSHA. That's 1-800-321-6742. You guys memorized the number already? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we can see, you know, that's uh, an easy solution. It may be 
uh, a little bit more expensive than having the uh, ladder on top of the scaffold, but uh, it will certainly save some money when that guy falls, you know, and uh, the, the, the life uh, prevention, you know, it, there is no way to, to recover from the loss of a life. So, you know, that, that's something to consider. So we, we've seen there are different type of uh, scaffolds, you know, you have some of those that are uh, movable, some of those are fixed, you know, you always have to have the cross bracing to support it and uh, make sure that a uh, competent person um, is there to inspect the installation of the scaffold and make sure it's uh, properly uh, installed. There are different type of scaffolds uh, for different uh, operations. You know, you you always have to be aware of uh, their limitations and uh, make sure that they are solid, solid in their uh, construction and you know installation. You may have uh, issues with uh, power lines. You know, you you need to stay away at least ten feet from. Uh, power line, so so that's another consideration you have to to take when working with scaffolds. You need to have also good means of access in and out of that scaffold. Here we see a, a uh, power line that's too close to, to that scaffold. You know, when people fall, people fall when climbing on and off of the scaffold while working on uh, unprotected edges, you know, uh, some plants may fail and people will, will fall from there. Here we have a, a scaffold that clearly, you know, it's not uh, properly installed, it's not stable, so that that can uh, fall down. Um, I think I have a picture here from a... Uh, So you need to have uh, good uh, measures, you know, also under that scaffold to prevent people from being hit from objects that may, may fall. The, the planks uh, should be at least inch, 18 inches wide, as uh, Mike uh, said before, should be made of a uh, good wood that is not going to collapse while working. You need to have, uh, again, access to the scaffold is important. I've seen people climbing through the cross braces, that's not, you know, the intent of those elements. You should you, you should have a ladder or a, a, a good axis. Sometimes the, the, the sides um, are designed with, uh, with, with rocks that you can use to, to go up and down. You said the wood has to be good wood. Isn't scaffolding wood different? You can't just put a two by can't use a 2x4, right? It's like a thicker, thicker grade of thicker, wood. Yeah. Plank. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, most of the scaffold planks, you'll see it'll say OSHA approved scaffold plank. Because other than that, if you use your own wood, you would have to be able to show through an engineer's signature that it meets a certain compression strength or deflection rate. But usually people say, forget all that. Yeah. I'm just going to buy an OSHA approved plank. And, and then what's the overlap? On those? <clears throat> well, it depends. They, if, there's, if there's an overlap, it should meet at a, at a vertical member. Yeah. A lot of the ocean planks you buy, they'll have little markings on the end, or if not, you'll see people, they'll paint the tips red or orange or green right at six inches because you shouldn't have less than six inches bearing on a vertical member mm -hmm. because there could be slippage. Okay. And, then, um, and then there's another number for how far you want it to actually overhang. I think max overhang, yeah. I think, is 12 inches because they don't want you, you know, the cartoon effect, seesaw, you step on one side right. and it goes up. Very good. Thank you. Uh, stay away from uh, electrical power lines. Uh, the rebars, uh, rebars should be capped. You know, you need to have some protection to prevent uh, employees to get uh, impaled, and, uh, impaled with, the, with these uh, rebars. Sometimes what, they, what people do is they, they install two by fours on top of those uh, rebars and then they, they cover a whole bunch of them uh, to protect employees from getting uh, hurt. Ladders, you know, people sometimes know, don't know how to use even a simple ladder. One of the, the most important rules is uh, the portable ladder has to land 
at least three feet above the uh, the place where, where people are getting off. Uh, some companies will paint three feet of the ladder in red, so you can visually see that it's on top of the landing point. Or, you know, if, if you don't have that, you, you, you measure about one foot per, per, rug. per rug. Yeah, exactly. So you need to have at least three of those on top to make sure that the thing is, uh, is properly used. You know, don't stand uh, on the top of the ladder. Uh, make sure that the ladder it's uh, it's in good operating conditions. You know it's fully uh, open, and uh, tie that ladder to to the structure so it's not moving and and it's secure so people can have a good stable place to get in and out. Here you know we have a hard uh, hazard, falling hazard. This person is just uh, hanging uh, you know from that scaffold and. There's no fall arrest systems, there doesn't seem to be any planks over there, so that's a, a very dangerous situation to be working in. Here, you know, recognizing hazard. <laughs> yeah, right? That person can fall right there uh, easily. Here we have, you know, people. Uh, working at heights without any kind of a fall arrest systems. I'm gonna go a little bit uh, faster here. It's, see, we, 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 don't, we have a case where the ladder is not three feet above the place where it's landing, so that's dangerous. Here, you know, that, that uh, ladder where you're stepping in the very top, it becomes very unstable, so you, you can fall very easily. People get creative in the way that they support themselves, you know, and that can break and fall down. Yes? Um, just a question with, a, with reference to the ladders. How do you know when you're inspecting, I'm assuming you're supposed to inspect the ladder? Yeah. When you're inspecting the ladder, that when you get to a position where it, the ladder allows you to open and to go up, that any of these um, anchors that actually supposed to support it that you get on top of it is not going to do this great yeah well you, you, you will look at it when it's on the floor before you're placing up and you see if it is rusted or if, if it's uh, broken or if it's bended if you see any deformation or or any signs that uh, compromise the material of the ladder then you know it's a potential hazard, and you should take it out of uh, duty and you know mark it as a as a defective uh, equipment to get it replaced. You you do an inspection on it before you put it on, right? Does that answer it, your question? Or? Well, I'm just wondering if it's something that's so obvious that people liberally miss it, or if it's something that actually people it's just a matter of ignorance they think it's safe and then they I mean I wouldn't know personally if a ladder is is going to fly on me or not if I if I look at it and there's no rust there's I mean I mean I would look for right. the obvious but I wouldn't yeah. know as far as the anchorage or whether or not when I lock it in place whether it's going to oh, okay. on me or not right well there, there's a couple of rules the one is that the, the ladder should be Posed in a, a one uh, one foot away for every four feet that goes up, so that makes an angle that it's stable. So when you get on the ladder, it's not going to flip back down on you. One way to to make sure that that angle is correct is you put your feet on the bottom of the uh, ladder, and when you extend your arms, you touch the ladder. So that that's a good four to one ratio okay so that makes it, it it makes it sort of secure and then you move the ladder if it doesn't move on your hands then it's properly secure to the to, to the structure so then you're safe to go on if you move it and you you, you easily can pull it to yourself or sleep or slide it down then that ladder is not properly secure to the structure and you can fall when, when getting on top of it the, the, one of the reasons I'm asking that is because, I, I guess it was two semesters ago, I had 
a roofer on mm -hmm. my roof. Yeah. He went on um, to do the inspection. It wasn't his first time on the roof. That was the second visit. He went on just before I stopped class at 8 o'clock. Right. And he fell. Okay. With the ladder gave out underneath him. Yeah. He fell backwards on the concrete and mm -hmm. the ladder fell somehow, some way. The ladder didn't fall on top of him. But he fell on top of the ladder with his back on it because oh, I heard wow. the I heard the boom, and when I went out, Tim's mouth he was bleeding out of his mouth and he was almost he lost conscious later on and wow. regained it. But it was a pretty scary scene because I've never seen that before. It was my first encounter with a fall incident yeah. in a, I guess at all. Um, but I'm the the what came to mind is. He's a pretty experienced contractor. Um, my house is not that high um, to, for him to be on the roof without, I mean, according to what I'm seeing, without a, with a harness, I don't think it was over 10 feet. When he fell, actually, he wasn't over 10 feet. Um, but, um, or maybe barely over 10 feet from the eave. But um, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure how he, could have prevented this, which is why I'm asking the question, how do you actually know that, because if he went up, technically he didn't, you know, there was no issues with the security of the ladder onto the roof, I'm thinking. Well, many things can happen, you know, you, you have a, a person who's experienced, and it's maybe in a rush, and he will maybe not take precautions to say, well, let me check that this ladder is safely placed before I get up. And another thing that could happen is you have the ladder in the right angle, he gets on top of it and maybe moves it with his feet. So then now it becomes in a, in a steeper angle. And when he tries to get down, that thing flies and he falls, you know, that, that's uh, because it's not attached to the, to the roof. So that, that's a problem. You should use a ladder that allows you to uh, lock into the roof and then, you know, do your operation safe. That, that's, uh, you know, you, you may be very good at what you do, but maybe sometimes your mind is somewhere else and you're not taking the precautions that you should in order to, to protect yourself and not. I, uh, I had a... In my, in my house, we have a, an attic, and um, I had a stair, a, a ladder, put on because I was uh, going in and out to put some Christmas stuff, and I tied that ladder to the wood structure, so, you know, it, it, it will not move, and it will be in the right angle. So, if my kids see that ladder over there and they decide to go up, it will be safe for them to do that. They will not have a hazard of the, the ladder falling down. So, you know, you, you try to protect not only yourself, but other people that can come in and, and use it. All right. Uh, here we have, you know, employees in an uh, unprotected side. Here we have a guy working on a, on a, on a roof. And, you know, he tied a, a cable and somewhere around his, uh, his body, you know, do you think that's uh, safe? Probably not, right? <clears throat> Here we have, you know, uh, excavations, what we talked about before is the possibility of a trench collapsing while somebody's in there. And the, you know, it's, uh, it's really, Dangerous. Uh, I'm going to skip some of these because uh, we've talked about that. Uh, here we have uh, training. It's an important part of uh, fall protection. You need to train your employees in how to use the fall arrest systems, how to inspect them, how to make sure that you know the ladder will be secured and in the right place. Uh, for all the rescue procedures, you know, you should not have the person uh, hanging over there for more, more than four minutes after being found because of the circulation issues. You know, call 911, get that person down to the floor. 
you know, plan for the rescue. Here we have a, an employee that uh, falls, and then you know there is a plan in, in action. They have a, a basket attached to the crane. They save uh, that employee, take them down to the ground, safe. And then you know this is what I was talking about before. You know people who are uh, a little bit, um, uh, you know, that, that has a. Uh, different personalities, you know, you have people who are submissive, people who are dominating and aggressive, and you may have workers over there who have been doing work for years, and they don't feel like uh, using water resistance, and then they, you know, they try to press their ideas into other workers, you know, you should be able to say, no, I'm not going to use, uh, you know, be unsafe in that situation, you know. It's a, it's a risk uh, that I'm not uh, willing to take, and you know, sometimes it's difficult to, hire, to, to, to work with uh, difficult people, you know, how to handle those situations. All right, 